Word 5, The Death of the Ancients. The triple golden gateways and their brazen portals creaked, grinding with a rumbling groan, and although no hand had touched them, as by spell they opened wide, opened widely all alone. And below the double ramparts, with their unscaled walls and moats, and below the hills around, rising blue and green and purple, Marmara's advancing waves churn and from the wharves rebound. Clustered ships from Frankish harbours, galleons from Genoese ports and Venetian coasters sway. They seem all to be awaiting costly bales and merchandise for barter or for holiday. Banners flap at every topmast. Figureheads jut from each pro, faces gleam tanned by far seas, hearts beat fast and arms are lifted as if seeking to embrace, flags and scarves wave on the breeze. And from all the shores and headlands on the fronting Asian coast, where Bithynia's mountains swell, something gathers dark and fearful ever nearer and more fierce, wrath of God and rage of hell. Now the wave's low sound is covered by that thunder from afar, then there seems a mingled beat of their murmur and the clamor, now the clash of hooves is heard, now is heard the tramp of feet. Through the gaping gates which opened flows a crowd with lagging gait and with slow and heavy tread. But one knows not if this concourse is for welcome or farewell to the living or the dead. A procession without holies, without gospels, without priests, without banner, cross or rite. Of what cult are these the mysteries? They are not extolled with anthems, candles shed on them no light. One sees neither child nor woman, only elders with white hair, youths and middle-aged men. And they walk with sunken shoulders, as from cave beneath the earth, as from sunless cell and den and they hesitate and stumble, as if they were still unused to the open light of day. Foreheads sink in trembling fingers, and their hands are pressed to eyes, dazed with sunshine and dismay. Thus they go, and all appalls them, far horizons, restless winds, sunbeams and the boundless sea, heavens poised above and round them, mighty nature, teeming life, and the day's exultant glee. They seem all to come from study, of unciphered ancient books, of strange runes and hidden lore, and of wisdom far more precious than Arabia's topaz gems or the pearls of Persian shore. They seem all to come from musing over formulas and scripts, over parchments frayed and old. But as they draw nearer, stooping with their slow and certain step, in their hands what do they hold? Pilgrim staves they hold and heralds' wands tipped with green myrtle bows and with silver olive sprays. Loudly ring their hobnailed sandals, and a heavy traveller's pouch from each weary shoulder sways. And along the marble jetties, suddenly the angry wave bursts in foam upon the ramp. From afar another tumult sounds the clattering of hooves and of marching feet the tramp. One by one at first they gather, and in twos and threes they follow, and in fours and greater numbers. 
in their shielding arms they carry precious books and scrolls of parchment sealed in gold and ivory cases richly carved and ornamented and they carry them to safety in their sheltering arms they bear them on their shoulders in their bosoms as if they were sacred relics wonder-working holy icons as if they were heavy hewers urns filled with their father's ashes precious books and scrolls of parchment books whose faces are of purple scrolls whose flesh of silk is woven large and small of all dimensions and of every shape and color from afar one sees their cases and they have the look of columns and they seem to be dead altars they resemble flags and censers and they gleam like royal diadems they are like to godly statues and to anaglyphs of heroes and to prophets mighty visions and to monuments and coffins they are votive gifts oblations which their bearers take to lay them at the feet of newer idols among peoples of new countries waiting joyfully to greet them in their temples and their forums over there in the far distance and the temples and the forums all stand waiting ever waiting to be clothed by them in splendor what are those scrolls you carry of parchment wrought o oh, you reverend flocks that hurry as if by tempest caught and within those scrolls you carry and those books like tumbic stones what diamonds and what knowledge what dead what sacred bones something surged the concourse eddied broke and then to me a voice in answer spoke in these coffin shells imprisoned and enshrouded in these scrolls o oh, mourn them not as dead with bitter sighing are the limpid springs of thought the cloudless skies of art the beautiful and the undying these are of truth the teachers and of beauty the elect youth candor and sublimity are lying bright suns for your delight amid an april's dews the beautiful and the undying from the coastline of ionia from the breeze of attic air that wafts to all a soul with its own flying from hellas soil they sprang rhythm wisdom and the word the beautiful and the undying these the platos and advancing other sages lords of thought and with them virtue i am valor crying the homers end behind them the olympus builders all the beautiful and the undying they have left their last loved homeland by a ruthless blast expelled their wandering course like jews and gypsies plying though wanderers victors they and free of all the world the beautiful and the undying i know them i i know them i shouted in reply i know them and their follower am i for i know all songs and verses but to voice their varied runes I must set them to the music of my own familiar tunes. Then the speech that they had opened, by these words of mine I closed. Unto here they have been harried, the beautiful and the undying, by whirlwind and by tempest, by earthquake, wreck and din, ever scourged and lacerated, ever flayed and mutilated, by strangers, by their kin priories they found and cloisters monasteries and cells schools and palaces acclaimed them but they never found ah me noonday suns and liberty 
languishing in den and prison, drooped their limbs apolline grace, till they seemed like ghosts arisen, and they found in every place a restricted world and narrow, a deceptive world of night. They became embalmed eagles, corpses sad and white, they resembled sleep-bound princes, they once youth and life and light. They have pined like tropic orchids, sheltered under hothouse glass, or like sickly daisies growing in a ruin's tangled grass. They have lived misapprehended in the pedant's hand, peered at by his eyes near-sighted on a dusty stand. They have lived enslaved and slighted, they have lived a life all blighted, and a servile cult was shown them, viler far than wounds and jeers, a thousand years, a thousand years. I fancied that a soul from out those scrolls had taken wing, and from the tomb's profoundest depths a hymn of triumph seemed to ring. We shall cross both land and ocean, we shall stay where never foot of Turk can crush our breast. Exile from our ancient homeland, whelmed by darkness in the east, we shall rise amid the west. Where we go we shall find homelands and create them, wafted from Byzance to Italian strand. We shall nest in seaborn Venice, we shall strike our root in Rome, Florence shall embrace our band. We shall scale the Alpine mountains and astound the Rhine, our dawn through the northern gloom shall glow. We shall glide the spirit's may time to all lands, in all things here, youth and hellas we shall sow. Planets wheeling in our splendor, we shall dart our beams of light, and in all dim places shine. Life shall beckon to the hermit, you shall drink the milk of joy, starveling and a heady wine. And the Celt, the Goth, the Teuton shall applaud us with delight, and all Italy shall see, black-robed priest and solemn pontiff, glorify Eurotus swan, and to Helen bend the knee. We shall teach forms to the builder, systems to the sage, to us, ruler, artist, all shall haste. Towns shall rise once more in turrets, judges shall again be found, skilled in beauty and in taste. When we leave this mouldering graveyard for the open world of light, we shall find our youth again. And freed from our narrow coffins, Alexander's, Caesar's new, the word sword shall trace our lane. Crests Olympian and Parnassian, Parthenons are wrought and men from our thought and our alloy. From the dead the soul has risen, once again the centuries hail great Pan with hope and joy. And at last the clerks and pedants, who have held us for so long, wrapped around in stifling shroud, and who go with us to carry these last relics of a race, now in dire destruction bowed, when they see us winged in glory tower from their hands to gain zeniths that forever shine they will deem us fulfilled visions and in our supernal light they themselves will gleam divine then as though they stood before me the beautiful and the undying my soul replied my soul made answer crying you will pass across the ocean, the wide ocean of the world, like the swirl of a gentle breeze of summer that reshapes the dancing wave, giving it the willowy figure of a girl. But across the world's wide ocean, after you and ever, like yesterday and today, shall clash with frenzy, shall embrace, shall meet in strife, other hurricanes and other winds at bay. And across the world's wide ocean, never shall your birth time may bloom once more. You are sighs that pass and dwindle, and the ever restless shall be assailed by every whirlwind as before. 
What then if you be immortal? Life, the full and living life. Once of old, you lived free among the living, with your body's grace untold, in the sunlight and the zephyrs of your land of birth divine. Other suns and other breezes, for you now, never again, shall you live your past existence, spectres vain. There may yet be hearts and cities, decked by you anew with flowers. To your lore men may bow, bound to the idols of past Hellas and its shades. Hellas, though, is one and vanished. Mourn her, mourn her evermore. And whoever would endeavor, individual or nation, servile in your prince to tread, with you he shall pass away. He alone, who in your presence, shall not lose the soul within him, and shall only pluck your blossoms sparingly to crown his head. He alone beneath the heavens, like a bridegroom, shall be seen, striding on, decked with your beauty, ever onward, proud, serene. Progress, learn, is not for bondsmen. Even should they serve for master, the lord of every art and beauty, progress learn is for the free, for such as we. You shall pass like us, the gypsies, scattering the seed of freedom and the scorn of slavery in each guise it may appear. Thus through you the world shall ever draw to us more near. Yet, though you may have for weapons, measure, sanity, and law, it will serve you not, white brothers, of our bronzed race. For like us, your tribe will never find a resting place. Though your tread, O oh my white brothers, may re-echo sweeter music than the gypsies passing by, though the world may ever open, foolish mouths to praise you loudly, though it may hold out on high, clutching hands to snatch each diamond, real or false, that decks your garments, you will ever dwell apart from the nations, and however close you draw to any nation, you will never win its heart. But with us, the shunned and hated, or with you, with honours sated, the world will march barbarian, and enslaved. You, the beautiful and the undying, shall be the nation's guide, but you shall not give the nations feet and wings and youth's brave tide, for the feet and wings of nations are their feet and wings their own. You, the beautiful and the undying, shall illume the nation's way, like a star whose flame was darkened ere the centuries held sway, yet whose orphaned beam forever through the heavens weaves its flight, guiding with its feeble glimmer the tireless wanderer of the night. I fear not the Turk's dominion, and from slavery's sharp claws I am freed. Alas, leaves me all undazzled, and I never have been drunk on the incense of past glory or past creed. When I chance to find a parchment, I set fire to it to gain warmth or light. Unconcerned, my hearth I kindle amid any ruined pile, monastery or stately palace, school or temple site. In the flame's illumination, round me trees and creeping things, and swift birds glimmer, rustle, change and flutter, and all nature finds a soul whispering to me in secret, deep, prophetic words. Whether light you be or music, you are but of a lost past, the last toll. O oh, you awe-inspiring phantoms, Know in me the whole and true, for I am that pair united, flesh and soul. But the escort and the relics, without sign or reply, pass on. The ships receive them, they have vanished from the eye. And through those same wide portals, with martial clash,
crash and din, the sultan, the destroyer, on his charger cluttered in. <laughs>